All right. There we go. Thank you, Derek, for the reminder. We are recording, so keep that in mind as you're sharing any personal details. Um, our um, scripture for today is Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And I will pull it up on the screen. 35 to 41? 35 to 41. Gotcha. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let's go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? All right. Thanks, Owen. So Jesus was teaching from a boat as a crowd gathered along the shore just prior to this. Primarily, he taught parables to the crowds, but afterwards, Jesus nurtured the faith of the disciples as he further explained the meaning of the parables. Remember last week, it said, um, at the end of the parable of the mustard seed, it said right. that he then took the disciples aside and explained everything to them. Unfortunately, they didn't write any of that down, so we don't get the benefit of that. So when evening comes, Jesus asks to go to the other side of the sea. Now, we call it a sea, but it's also called a lake. It's not that big. Um, I was there back in uh, 99, and I mean, you can easily see to the other side. In fact, when I was there in 99, they were building... Um, a platform just below the surface of the water so that tourists could walk across the water <laughs> like Jesus. So as they sailed across the lake, Jesus fell asleep in the stern. And that night a storm developed, swamping the boat in big waves. All right, so in your mind's eye, how would you picture that scene? Uh, nervous. Nervous, nerve-wracking. Yeah, they were probably figuring this could possibly be the end. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. You know, they were yeah. going to drown. No, definitely, right? You know, if the boat goes under. Yeah. Anybody in our group been on a boat before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Ever been on rocky waters? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really grabs you, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. We got seasick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even the normal, you know, ebb and flow of the boat, at first it's a little unsettling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, especially, especially when you can't swim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <See? laughs> And Jesus slept through all of it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I I could swim, and one time we tried to get out the inlet, and it was a windy day, and my husband and his friends they did it. We were on a twenty five foot boat, and when we got done, I said, "Never again will I leave the bay. I am <laughs> never going out in the ocean with you guys again." <laughs> 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 And even when you're coming back in and you're rolling with the waves, then the waves um, are pushing you. It was, oh my gosh, it was. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a feeling, right? I mean, you really do end up feeling pretty small. 
Yeah. Yeah. You feel the power of the of the water taking you and you have no control over it. Right. And I mean, keep in mind, a lot of these guys were fishermen. So they're used to being in a boat. They're used to rough Mm. water. So the fact that they're panicked means it was really bad. Right. So the disciples, they reacted with panic and despair. They believed that they were going to drown. And Jesus, as Derek said, he's sleeping like a baby on the cushion. So finally, the disciples, they can't take it anymore. And they wake Jesus up, crying out to him, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? The disciples revealed no underlying hint of hope of Jesus rescuing them from the storm. There wasn't a glimmer of expectation of Jesus stilling the storm. So why do you think they woke Jesus? Because they didn't know what to do. And uh, they were his disciples, so they did know him better than somebody else. And maybe they expected he could do something. Okay. I'm thinking it was kind of like a last ditch effort, you know, we've bailed as much as we possibly can. And let's wake Jesus because I guess he's going to die with us. Uh (laughs) It's funny how it says they uh, said they shook him. Don't you care if he was sleeping? How would he know Uh as far as as far as one person to another? Yep. It didn't say that they woke him up. They just said, don't you care? Yeah. Yeah, but they're they're probably out of options, right? They're panicked. There's nothing else they can do. Mm-hmm. So whether they thought Jesus could do something or not, they just wanted him to be there with them. Okay, right. You know, he was there physically, but he wasn't with them while he was asleep. So they wanted him to, to be awake. In a very selfish way, right? He would have, in their mind, he would have just been asleep and they all would have drowned, but they wanted him to be awake and realize that they were going <laughs> to drown together. Well, could it be that they thought he could do something? Because at this point, he's, they've been with him for a while and yep. they've seen some of the things he's done. Yep. I mean, mm-hmm. is it possible that that's what they were thinking? Not well, it's definitely die possible. With us. What's that? It's definitely possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking if they're not thinking he's, he's going to die with them, they're thinking he can do something. Maybe. Based on what's been happening in the in the past. Yeah, it's possible. Funny, is he, he's what? just sleeping alone. He's just sleeping. And you're like, I mean, this is natural. Don't you care? Like, world's ready. You don't, you don't care. Like, don't you anybody know. might say it, right? <laughs> Got to wake him up first to say, don't you care? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, he doesn't care because he's sleeping. Right. Well, and remember, I mean... You know, we don't know exactly what their motivation was, but we know that at the end, they're surprised that he is able to call the storm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, you know, I kind of equate it, you know, like when you're going through something, you know, like, like during the pandemic, when there was no food in the stores, and I was the one doing the shopping. You know, there were days that I'd come home and I'd say to my husband, don't you care that I can't find food? Like, are you going to do something to help me here? Like, are you going to go out and try to find food and toilet paper and whatever else? We need? It's kind of like you want somebody to support you while you're feeling like there's panic, you know? Um. So they probably maybe were like just looking, all right, maybe he can support us and help us feel better. Or, you know, they might not have figured that he was going to have the answer, but. Yeah, but they just want him to be with them. With them, right. Yes, right. So is the behavior of the disciples predictable or warranted? Yeah. It's natural. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When you're going through that panic, they. You know, they're looking to their leader to, to be right. with them. Absolutely. Whether or not he could solve the problem, they just mm-hmm. wanted him to be mm-hmm. with them. So how would you have expected Jesus to react? 
Well, I, I would not have expected him to act sternly like it sounds like here. I would, I would expect him to say, all right, guys, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. Don't worry. No, I got so that kind of thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but he does, he does rebuke them, right? Right. He was very stern about it. Yeah. So but Jesus, go ahead. Vicky. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, but I think he had every right to, you know, they've been watching him heal people and, you know, go up against the religious leaders and, you know, they've been hearing his teaching and, you know. Well, so that, that, that's why I said that the, 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 they probably expected he could do something based on all the stuff he's done that they've well, witnessed. But I don't think so. I think they were just, I think they were just waking him. Like, don't you care about this? And he was basically saying to them, wouldn't you have woke me and asked me to help? Like, I've been showing you that I am there and I can do these things. Why didn't you come to me, you know, thinking I could do something? Well, I feel yeah. like that's, he says that to me all the time. Why don't um, you come to me? I can help you. <laughs> well, and we see the difference, right? It's one thing when the disciples are watching Jesus do things for others, right? Yeah. But then when it's them, they forget all that and they panic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're going to get to that in our Bible study, but obviously there's, there's a correlation to the storms in our own life, right? And I'll speak for myself only. It's a lot easier for me to tell someone else, don't worry, Jesus is going to take care of you. But when it's me, I'll panic. Well, and yeah. I forget that Jesus is going to take care of me. I need somebody else to remind me. And that's what's happening with the disciples. They watch Jesus do it for others. But now that they're the ones who need him, they forget that he could easily take care of it. Well, they were trying to do it without him. Obviously, they said they were bailing, bailing the water, you know, and then it just got to be too much. Right. So they, they weren't trying to disturb him, but yep. now it comes time, like, we got to yep. gotta wake him up. Yep. And again, we, you know, we have this correlation with our own lives and I'll speak about myself uh, for, for now, but, you know, there was a long time when I would pray, I would only pray for others. And I would literally in my prayer say, Jesus, I'm all good, but yeah. help my mom and my sister and my dad and my cousins and, you know, whatever. Right. But then I realized how ridiculous it was that, that I would be saying to God, I'm all good. I don't need you right yeah, now. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. Mm -hmm. I feel that way all the time, though. So I'm like, well, my, my issues are really not that big. Somebody else has it worse than me. I shouldn't really ask for myself. I right. guess that's natural until desperate times you say, I really need you. I have no other place to turn. Right. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I agree right. with you, Janet. No, because, I mean, I think as Americans, as humans, we're, we're brought up told that we're supposed to be self-sufficient, right? You're supposed to take care of yourself and everything's supposed to be fine, whether or not it really is. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the reasons Jesus is stern with them is that they waited until they were desperate before they finally went to it. When the wind first started, when the first wave came over the bow, they could have gone to Jesus and he could have stopped it right, nipped it in the bud. Yeah, but like you said, they're used to having conditions like that, so they don't think about that they right. need Jesus' help. Right, because, because, again, they're fishermen and they probably said to one another, I've seen this before. We can right. handle it. Just like I do in my life. And I say, I've dealt with this before. I'll do it. I can take care of it. Right. You know, I am 
and again, I'll speak about myself only. I am the worst about asking for help. I do, I cannot, it is like a blow to my ego to ever ask for help about anything. You're not alone. I know. Jen will yell at me all the time that, you know, whatever project, whatever we're doing, I don't want anyone to come over and help. I don't, I can do it myself. I can lift the couch myself. I can move whatever it is myself. I'll do it. I'm not going to bother anybody else. But I think that is where Jesus' frustration is here, is that he's not bothered that they're asking for help. He's bothered that they didn't ask for help sooner. And I think a lot of us fall into that trap. That we say to God, I'm all good. I've got it all handled. I've got it all handled. I've got it all handled until you don't. And it's not until you get to that desperation point that we actually ask for help. Hopefully, hopefully not all do. Some will go down with the boat. You know, they'll, they'll be convinced. I'll take care of it. Let Jesus sleep. I mean, at least the good news in this is that the disciples finally got to a breaking point where they asked for him. And I mean, I'm off a little bit from the Bible study, but again, it's such a great lesson to us that when they finally ask, what does Jesus do? Well, immediately yeah bam immediately immediately all that worry all that fear that they went through they didn't have to go through if they had just asked jesus in the beginning it would have been taken care of but no they were you know forceful about it if it's that's true in the beginning like we just discussed that it probably didn't think it was such a big deal you don't when you're going through it. And then in the end, I'll bet looking back at it, they were like, yeah, we should have just asked from the start. Mm. And how often do I find that in my own life? I don't ask for help. I don't ask for help. And then I finally do. And then looking back, I'm like, well, why didn't I just do that in the first place? Um, you guys all know this story, but I love telling it. Um, a couple of years ago, when I was in uh, Croatia, we went sailing. My, my father-in-law has a 40-foot sailboat. And we're sailing to this remote island, beautiful, most beautiful beach I've ever been to in my life. And they have anchors on buoys out on the coast that you, you hook your boat to, and then you swim the rest of the way to the, to the beach. You can't get there by any other vehicle. It's great. So my brother-in-law is, is captaining, piloting, whatever you call it, the boat. And as we're getting close to this buoy, he tells me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up alongside it and you're going to take the hook and you're going to hook the buoy and then we're going to connect it to our anchor and then we'll, we'll be good. Okay. So he's coming in a little <laughs> too fast and I've really not sailed much, so I don't know any better. So I had it in my mind, I'm going to hook this buoy and hold on to it, and that's going to stop the boat. (laughs) Yeah, you know how this is going to (laughs) end. Yeah, because I've never been on a boat that big before. You know, in a canoe, you can do that. Mm -hmm. On a 40-foot, (laughs) multi-ton sailboat, there was no stopping this boat. But in my mind, truly in my mind, I thought if I hold on hard enough, I'm going to stop this boat. So I, I hook it, I hold on, and of course, the boat keeps going. <laughs> and I won't let go. So what happens, I stay still, and the boat keeps going. So I get drugged all along the boat, all 40 feet of the boat. And I get shred, I mean, I got torn oh, up yikes. Oh. by the side of the boat as I'm going. Mm. And my brother-in-law, finally, as I get to the end of the boat and I'm about to fall off the back of the boat, yells to me desperately, 
let go with some <laughs> colorful language along with it. And I finally let go. And he said to me, I can just come back around. It's okay. <laughs> but, and I'm really, I, I tell that story a lot because I think it applies to us in life. That so often in life, we hold on desperately thinking mm. we can handle it. Well, even though we're getting beaten up and, you know, broken, we insist that we can handle it ourselves. But all God wants us to do is let go so that he can take care of it. But we're so stubborn and we're so, I'm going to hyperbolize a little bit, but we, we believe that we have such power that we can handle it ourselves, but we really can't. And all God wants us to do is let go. As an addendum to that story, by the way, I went back to that island a couple days later with my father-in-law, who is a more experienced captain. And as we pulled up to the buoy and he told me that I had to hook it and I had like PTSD from this. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled up to the buoy and he threw the engine in reverse and he stopped on a dime. <laughs> I hooked it. I pulled it up. I said, why didn't Walter do that a week ago? It was a kind of trouble. He was testing you. Yeah, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and I failed, Janet. <laughs> so... Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind, calming the sea with the words, peace, be still. And with these words, the wind ceased, waters were calm. Yet, what about the chaos and the panic in the hearts of the disciples? Internally, they're still in the storm. Jesus seemed amazed that the disciples were so scared. Where was their faith? And Jesus, he directly challenged them. Why were you afraid? Have you no faith? So again, through the conversation we've had, can you sympathize with the disciples? I can. Definitely. Yeah, yeah sure. definitely. <laughs> Imagine, what do you think the reaction is of the disciples when Jesus said that to them? They were probably confused because they did seek his help finally, and, um, and he's yelling at them. So, yeah. uh, they were probably confused. <laughs> Lots of process. They're probably a little Rather. hurt too. Yeah. You know. Oh well, we did finally come to you, and now you're yelling at us. You know, uh -huh. like. <laughs> and it's also, you know, I mean, even when, like you're saying before, where we need to remind each other that sometimes when I've been reminded by somebody else, you know, have you prayed about it for yourself? Have you gone to Jesus? And you feel a little sheepish, like, oh, no, I didn't. I didn't think of that. I forgot. I should know better. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like me holding on to that hook, you know? Yeah. I realized, looking back, how dumb it was that I was doing it. But in the moment, it never occurred to me to just let go. Right. So, yeah, I mean, confused is definitely the right answer whenever asking a question about the disciples, right? <laughs> right. And I also, the disciples get it wrong just about every time. Even when they get it right, they got it wrong. <laughs> you know, they did ask for Jesus, but they didn't do it soon enough. But it gives me some confidence in knowing that, you know, if those 12 guys can all get it wrong, then maybe I'm not so bad when I get it wrong. Right, right. So Jesus had been with the disciples for a while now. Owen had said this earlier, teaching and training them. Yet their faith, it's still like they're beginners. So after calming the storm, the disciples are filled with awe 
And they said to one another, again, this is the guy that had healed people, you know, had done miracles in front of them. And now they say, who is this guy? <laughs> Even the wind in the city, they obey him. As much as they had seen Jesus heal others and perform miracles, they, they just didn't grasp his power to impact their lives when they were in need. Again, it was one thing for them to watch Jesus do things for others, but this is the first time that he's doing something for them. And it's like their eyes are opened at this point. Well, that's, that's why it says they were in awe, you know? Yep. He can even stop the, the wind and the storm. Yeah, yeah. Calm the, calm the water. Yeah, epic. Yeah. Yeah. Grand scale. I think, I think the awe was more about, wow, for me? You did that for me? Uh-huh. You know, as Pastor Justin said, you know, they've been watching him do it for other people. Yeah, that man deserved to be healed. That one deserved to be healed. But I deserve Jesus stopping the storm for me? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. It's why I, I say over and again, I could never convince someone to have faith. You can't. You could tell someone about Jesus. You could read yeah. the Bible to them. Mm -hmm. You could sing songs to them, but you're not going to put faith in their heart. It's not until they experience Jesus in some way that they that they fully can realize faith and you can't manufacture that that's i've had conversations with people who tell me they want to have faith but they don't and there's nothing that i can say that's going to convince them they have to experience jesus for the disciples they watch jesus like you were saying but this is the first time that they experience jesus Right. And it's like their eyes are open. And I mean, on one hand, that's that's uplifting and encouraging. But when you keep in mind that they experience it and they say, wow, this guy is the real deal. But we know how the story goes that they lose it later. Later on, yeah. Yeah, that it's tenuous at best. We experience Jesus and hopefully everyone in this group, at one point or another, you had that realization, you know, that, that feeling that there is something bigger than you in the world, you know? And obviously we recognize it as realizing God, realizing Jesus in our lives. You know, that feeling it's like a drug. I mean, it's exhilarating. It's amazing, but it's fleeting. And yes. unfortunately, we can't live on that plane all the time, at least not on this side of heaven. You know, the amazing thing is that that's the promise of eternal life, is that that incredible feeling is what eternity is going to be when we get there. And they also proved they were human too, as we talked later on, they, they uh, dissed themselves from, from Jesus, uh, like, yeah, even after witnessing this, but because they're human. They, 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 they don't really get it, I think, until Pentecost. I don't, I don't think they really got it before that. Right. No, you're 100% you're right, Owen. They, they don't. They don't. And again, you know, I take some solace in that, that if these 12 guys who are right with Jesus physically watching him do these things, if they can't get it, then I really can't beat myself up for not getting it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And Jesus stays with them. You know, Jesus may have been stern with them, no pun intended, as he was saying, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus didn't, you know, 
go to the dock and tell them to get lost. I'm going to start over. I'm going to get somebody who can get this. He stayed with them right. over and over and over again, even when they kept confusing things, even when they kept getting things wrong, even when they denied him, even when after all he did for them, they said, I don't know that guy. Right. He still came back to them. You know, I, I say often, God is the eternal sucker. You know, he's like Charlie Brown with the football. <laughs> Even though we keep pulling the football away, he just keeps on coming right. over and over and over again, giving us chance after chance after chance. And thank God for that, right? Yeah. Beyond our comprehension, Really? Yeah, beyond, beyond our comprehension, beyond our ability. You know, we don't have that ability to, to forgive like that. No. To have patience like that. All right, so I'm going to close with, with a couple more personal questions about how we apply that kind of level of trust to Jesus. So an open question here, are fear and trust opposite? Yeah, I think so. Like two sides of, the, of a coin, right? Yeah. The way to say it, yeah. Yeah, because fear is like you don't trust and faith is you do trust. We fear what we don't know. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes if you trust, then it's, you, you trust that it lays your fears. Uh -huh. uh, if you trust in, in something or something or some being um, that can overcome fear, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Well, faith even is trust when you are asking, and not for something luxurious, but um, you really need something or you lose something you didn't want to lose, you still have to have faith. Even Well, how I put it is, yeah, ask God, and he said no. Um, oh. it's, that's, that's when your faith is tested, I think. At least it was for me personally. Uh -huh. 11 years ago, I, I still, I wondered then why, why, and uh, I still don't know the answer, but I haven't, I was disappointed, but I haven't lost my faith. Uh -huh. I mean, everybody knows what happened, so. Sure. Yeah, in but, my line of work, I have the great privilege that I've been with a number of people in their last moments <laughs> of life. And I don't mean this as a judgment at all, but there are different ways that people have approached those last moments of their life. There are some faithful people that, you know, love and trust God, that in those last moments, they're afraid. And right. again, that's not a judgment at all, but they're afraid because they know where they're going, but but they still have that, you know, shred of doubt of the unknown and they're afraid. There are others that, I mean, will boldly tell me as they're taking their last breath, I'm not afraid. I know where I'm going and say it with full confidence that everything is okay. And again, it's not a judgment for one over another and both, both, categories were faithful loving people but man i hope i hope that when i'm in my last moments that i have that comfort of you know knowing that it's going to be okay right another quote though that that i hold on to here is that courage is not 
the absence of fear. That courage is being afraid, but going anyway. So I think you can have both and be there. You know, we're, we're humans. We have doubt. We have critical thought. I'd be lying if I told you that I was 100% certain in the afterlife, in even the existence of God. I have moments where I question it. You mm -hmm. know, I have moments where I wonder, was this all just made up to make us feel better? I mean, that's, that's just the, the struggle that I go through. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think we I all that. Yeah. I remember specifically as a kid, um, you know, where I grew up in New Jersey, just like here, was predominantly Catholic. So I was like the lone Lutheran of my friend group. They, they wondered if I was even Christian. And I remember specifically one of my good friends, very dedicated Catholic, altar boy, you know, the whole thing. He told me he went to his priest once and he told the priest you know i have some doubts some is this real and he said to me the priest told him that there was no room for that questioning wow that you you wow. either have faith or you don't oh, and that's wow. it and i remember as like a 12 year old kid even realizing that priest is full of crap <laughs> right <laughs> And I mean, it really, for this 12-year-old kid, I mean, it stayed with him. You know, it affected him. And I, I still think that priest was full of crap. Mm -hmm. yeah. That yeah. All of us, again, the disciples were right there. They watched him cast out demons. They watched him turn water into wine. They watched him heal the sick. They watched him raise the dead. Right. And they still doubted. But that's part of our human condition. Well, and I think it's it's good when our fears and our doubts drive us to Jesus. You know, yeah. because that's that's what that's in this reminder. story it did. It was their fear of going under, their fear of dying that drove them to Jesus. They didn't jump out of the boat. They didn't. You know, they went to him that was there. So in that case, their fear was a good thing because it right. drove them to Jesus. Right, exactly. In, that, in deeper wants, yeah. yeah, in deeper theological terms, I'll earn my paycheck here. <laughs> um, in deeper theological terms, that's called the third use of the law. So the law we would we would say are the Ten Commandments, you know, the the restrictions that are that are placed on us. The first use of the law is to keep us in line. The second use of the law is to realize that we can't keep it on our own, right? Remember, Jesus tells us it's not enough for you not to break a commandment, but you can't even think about breaking a commandment. Right. So he raises the bar to a point that we realize we can't do this on our own. So then that drives us to the third use of the law, which Vicky is referring to, of realizing I can't do this on my own, so I need Jesus. And that is the root of breaking away from sin. We think of sin as doing a bad thing, but that's not sin. That's the product of sin. Sin is not relying on God not putting God first. Whenever we put ourselves first, that's the root of all sin. And that's where you get the Ten Commandments from, right? When you're not honoring your parents, when you're coveting others, when you're cheating on your spouse, you're selfish. It's all about self in that. But it's when we put God first, trusting God, relying on God, listening to God, that's what breaks us from our selfish and our sinful ways. So closing question for us, what would it mean for you to choose to trust Jesus? Well, 
Want to say that again? What would it mean for you to choose to trust Jesus? I would have to to admit. Yeah. Go ahead. ahead. I would have to admit I can't do this on my own. I'd Mm. have to admit my weakness. Uh Ah. Janet, go ahead. I was going to say to turn to him first instead of trying to solve something on your own or not feeling like, well, it's not a big enough problem or to always turn to him first, mm. just to help me get through this and then let go and wait. Yeah. I mean, I That's think hard. a lot of times it forces us to look at ourselves because a lot of times the reason we're not going to Jesus is because we're stubborn or because we have to prove a point or we need to be right or I'll show them, you know, and instead of going to Jesus and seeing a better way, you know, but it takes a while for us to get there. Yeah, because we get stuck in whatever brokenness or weakness we have. Right. Instead of going to Jesus and saying, open my eyes to what's holding me back that weakness or that being stubborn or wanting to be right and let me let that go and so i can see your better solution i can do it sometimes but the the idea of doing it all the time is like daunting Mm. yeah i think it's having patience too patience to not you know you just kind of want to fix things right away or you just want results immediately and yep. sometimes that doesn't happen and maybe that's where that lack of trust comes in or that control it's more of a control thing even yeah 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 janet i think you, you hit the nail on the head there because in the story jesus wakes up and he does it right away right yeah but in life that doesn't always happen right away oh. Oh. So Definitely. what if the winds had kept going and Jesus told them, don't be afraid, it's fine. But the winds kept going. Would they have been in awe? You know, or would they have gone back to trying to solve the problem themselves? You know, if we don't get that, you know, we're in a we're a, an immediate uh, instant culture right instant gratification right impatience right if we don't get it right away then we try and figure something else out i know i'm guilty of that for sure but that's the challenge is riding out the storm knowing that eventually the winds will come well and what if what if jesus really was not asleep and he was laying there saying, just come to me. Just, you know, he's not saying it out loud, but he was, you know, trying to get him, get them to come to that point on their own. Yeah, I'll finish with, with another of my uh, redundant stories here. But uh, I was in Croatia another time, another trip. And... Um, they had a bad rainstorm that came through. And Jen's parents' house, grandparents' house, um, it's right on the water. It's like 50 feet in the ocean. And it flooded. Um, the hole downstairs was flooded. So my brother-in-law, my father-in-law and I are out there bailing water out of the house. But think about how ridiculous it is. I'm standing on the ground floor of the house. I'm getting a bucket of water, I'm throwing it out the door and it's just coming right back in. I mean, it's totally pointless, completely pointless. But for an entire day, I mean, literally like eight, 10 hours, we stood there bailing water out of the downstairs of the house. So we finish at the end of the day, I go upstairs and Jen's now deceased, but then like 92 year old grandfather who, you know, was born and raised there, lived in that house for his 90 years, is sitting on the second floor balcony watching us for these 10 hours. And I sit down, I make myself a drink because I really needed it at that point. 
And he turns to me and he spoke very limited English, but he said to me, you waste your time. Water goes up, water goes down. And he was 100% right. Yeah. There was nothing we were going to do. <laughs> we worked all day on trying to do something that couldn't be done. When naturally the water's just, when the water's going to go down, the water's going to go down. And there's nothing you can do about it. But, you know, how often do we figuratively do that in our life? We're bailing water out of the first floor, even though it's not going to do anything. It's just a lot of wasted effort. Good point. So there you go. You guys got the secret of life there. <laughs> <laughs> you got your money's doing? worth for buying and selling. <laughs> Now you just have to actually apply it. <laughs> That's the That's hard the part. That's the trick. When I figure out how to do that, I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Why don't we uh, close in uh, the Lord's Prayer, and then we can go out and enjoy this beautiful day. Sounds good. Let us pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. I will, will, will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. As we as forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the rush of evil. Thine is the kingdom, the kingdom, the power, the power, and the and glory. Amen. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Uh, just a reminder. Um, we are going to take a break from Bible study for July and right. August. And then my expectation is by the time we're ready to reconvene in September, we're going to be in person moving forward. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, everybody. All Have right. a great rest of your day. Have a good day. Thank you for all the saints, all you dads out there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.